Welcome to the Isaiah Project. The prophet of God, Isaiah, after observing the sinful condition and fallen state of his people, the Israelites, he came to the conclusion and wrote in his book, the fifth chapter, verse 13, and said, Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Today, regardless of one's ethnicity, political affiliation, or personal belief, there are still evil forces that seek to continue and prolong the deprivation of sufficient knowledge, and most importantly, the truth that all people are entitled to. The effort to possess, control, and manipulate the masses are more evident than ever before. This truth and information blackout is sustained not only by the media, but includes the public education system, governmental officials and agencies, and even the pulpits from which the gospel should be preached. The Isaiah Project has that mandate to bring knowledge that is essential for the betterment of our lives, our homes, our churches, communities, and even this nation. Welcome again to the Isaiah Project. I'm your host, Dr. Melvin Johnson. And today we have a very special guest who has come to us even out of his busy schedule, he's, he's in, traveling, and I sometimes look at what he's doing and believe that he spends more time in the air than he does on the ground. <laughs> but he is a great man of God, Reverend Dean Nelson. He's also the uh, president of the Douglas Leadership, Frederick Douglas Leadership Institute, as well as he's the national, as being the national director for the Human Coalition. Brother Dean, welcome to the Isaiah Project. Good to have you, and we believe that God is going to make great things happen. Thank you so much, Dr. Johnson, for having me. It's great to be with you, uh, mm -hmm. particularly regarding some of these important issues for our culture today. Yes, absolutely. And it's very important <clears throat> for our culture. And, and, and we're going to hone in on not just the culture, because what we're going to talk about, the issue, I call it child sacrifice. Mm. And, and because that's what it really boils down to. And uh, we can call it a lot of things most commonly known as abortion. Mm. But when I see child, say child sacrifice, mm. I'm looking at it from the biblical perspective. Yes, sir. Okay, and, and uh, so uh, it has greatly affected us as a people, as black people, as well it has uh, adversely affected the nation itself. But we want to just kind of hone in on how devastating it has been to the African American, the black community. Well, thank you for having me. This is an important subject, and uh, I think that one of the things that we've tried to do at Human Coalition, as well as the Douglas Leadership Institute, is to draw attention. And one of the ways that we've been able to draw that attention is by having some creative uh, videos. And so we'd like to get started by showing one of those to uh, highlight this just, just demonic uh, plague within our culture. Be my guest. That's utterly amazing. It's staggering. Yes. I mean, when you think about a city like New York City, where Planned Parenthood was first started by Margaret Sanger, you have more black children that are aborted than born alive. And it's not just New York City, but other segments of uh, Richmond, Virginia, uh, Detroit, Washington, D.C., 
many of our urban centers find themselves with high abortion rates. And uh, when I talk about this subject, though, Dr. Johnson, I like to highlight that during my grandmother's generation, a black woman was the least likely of any demographic group to receive an abortion. But once abortion became legal, uh, it gave cause for uh, those who were against us to push abortion strongly within the African-American uh, community. And we see that also today within the Hispanic community. And so part of what we're trying to do is to highlight what abortion really is. Uh, the abortion, as you stated, is child sacrifice. It is the taking of an innocent human life and where a, 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 the womb of a mother is supposed to be the most protected place of an unborn child, it has oftentimes become the most dangerous place. And we're trying to sound the alarm within our community, within all of America, quite honestly, about uh, what is going on and to help educate uh, and inform those uh, who don't know about this tragedy and what can be done about it. So your, your organization, the Human Coalition, that has been, how long has it existed, the Human Coalition? Yeah, Human Coalition is about to uh, have its uh, 10th birthday. It's uh, a very young organization. Uh, we've grown quite quickly. Uh, we have over 150 uh, employees around the country. Um, and primarily, we are a data-focused, metric-driven uh, nonprofit, faith-based nonprofit. We uh, serve uh, pregnancy centers, over 50 pregnancy centers around the country, but we also own and operate our own uh, women's clinic, particularly in urban communities uh, that provide um, free resources to women who find themselves in an unplanned pregnancy. We have mobile units that go into different communities, as well as we have now pioneered brand new technology that allows us to have a virtual continuum of care. So we have uh, nurses uh, that are on the phones, uh, particularly here in Texas, that are engaging with vulnerable populations that contact us, uh, and then we connect them to life-affirming services uh, that they might not have uh, otherwise known about. And so that's a little bit about uh, our, our operation. Uh, we've grown quickly. Uh, we, uh, for the last, you know, most of our, our years, uh, operated primarily on, uh, on uh, private financial donations, and uh, we've now expanded to provide some of our services uh, to states. And so states are now uh, finding out that we can provide a lot of services uh, more efficiently and more cheaply uh, than others. And so our hope is, is that we'll be able to see us grow and expand and those dollars that typically have been going to organizations like Planned Parenthood, hopefully more state governments and the federal government will recognize that we can save them money and that they should be working with us to provide free services and not kill our precious children. Okay, yes, yes, yes. And, and one of the things that we sometimes exclude or leave, leave out <clears throat> when it comes to the issue of abortion, child sacrifice, is what about the the lady, the woman who may have had an abortion? Because sometimes we can be so uh, straightforward, so much uh, on concerning the issue of don't do it. Some have unfortunately uh, been victimized by the abortion industry you yes. mentioned planned parenthood yes uh, can you is is there any help for the uh, post abortive uh, mother that's a very very good question and one of the things that we are careful particularly you know as as ministers of the gospel uh, we are careful to always emphasize uh, grace and forgiveness that is always found uh, in Jesus Christ and one of the things that we try to highlight is through uh, programs like Forgiven and Set Free uh, or other programs, Surrendering the Secret. These are faith-based, biblically-based programs to help women, uh, and in some cases even men, who have participated with abortion mm -hmm. to deal with the loss. Uh, you know, when you think about the fact that uh, whether they fully knew what they were doing or partially understood or didn't understand at all, but that they participated, you know, in the sacrificing of their own children. Uh, there's a process of healing uh, and, and grieving that they need to go through, knowing that God has completely forgiven them 
and that they too can uh, can be healed from uh, participating in that horrible choice that they may have made. Yeah, that's 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 so true. So that's a, that that's a very important issue uh, as far as letting women and men know mm -hmm. that through Jesus Christ there is mercy and forgiven forgiveness. That's exactly you know, right. Uh, we're two guys here, <laughs> you know, uh, obviously, and and. We do not experience what women obviously go through from the moment they uh, learn that they are pregnant and the, the, the troubles that they may have, uh, the sense of hopelessness mm -hmm. that they may experience. And sometimes uh, the men may abandon them. That's exactly right. And leave them totally on their own to try to f solve the problem themselves. Not only the men, the males, the fathers, mm -hmm. sometimes families yes. e even do that. And so it's absolutely important that we would be mindful to if we're, if we're going to be venturing into the, the, the necessary effort to save children we also got to think about now, and I, and I'm, I know that uh, the Human Coalition does, as well as as other uh, organizations similar to what you all are doing. But let us not ever forget about that lady, that girl, that teenager, that mom, because they are hurting also, without a doubt. And that's one of the things that we stress at Human Coalition is that we are a non-judgmental. Uh, faith-based organization. You know, most women that uh, choose abortion, uh, the vast majority of them say they do so because they think that they don't have any other options. And so what we do is, particularly through our aggressive marketing, uh, we connect with women uh, online through their cell phones. Uh, they will then get a message, uh, you know, from us and know that they can get help. They'll call us and reach one of our um, our agents at our contact center and our agents will take special care to affirm them to help engage with them and to get them into one of our women's clinics where they will uh, get the help and the support that they need oftentimes we'll make sure that they have a gift card uh, that we provide for them to cover their gas whatever we can do to connect and to engage with that woman to have her to come in and to get the support that we need. And one of the things that we have uh, experimented with and have now uh, uh, implemented in all of our clinics is what we call our continuum of care. Because in order for that woman most of the time to make the decision, the healthy decision to keep uh, their unborn child, uh, is that they need some assistance. And so with our continuum of care program, whether it is financial assistance, whether she needs help with getting a job, some of the women that come in um, are forced into bad situations and they don't yes. have somebody at home. So if there's housing needs, we try to come around her and to provide whatever she needs to make that decision and then to walk with her. We'll actually walk with her throughout that pregnancy. Many times at the end of that pregnancy, there's a, a wonderful baby shower that people will do for her within her community. But then our goal, Pastor, is to be able to engage her to either a church or to a community that she then can find the support that she needs if she doesn't have it at home. A real surrogate family, the support that she needs so that she doesn't have to make those decisions in the future. That's great. That's, that's wonderful. You know, uh, one of the things that I had done was to get curious enough because as preachers of the gospel, you and I, <clears throat> we know who the enemy is. Yes, sir. Yes, we sir. know who the enemy is. And uh, we know what the enemy wants to do. Yes. To uh, people, particularly we as a people. I'm looking at it from that perspective. Uh, because we are the most victimized group. And one of the things that I had done um, several months ago out of uh, curiosity was to take a look at our population as far as, you know, uh, black America, we, as black Americans, the uh, uh, percentage of the population, mm -hmm. we have been, I'd say, 12, 13 percent. That's right. 
I think for at least the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. For a while. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> for the past 20 years, it, it has stopped right there at, at that percentile within that range. And one of the things that I, I, did, that I did, I ended up uh, creating a chart. Uh, I went back to 1920, mm. you know, and, and looked at the uh, U.S. Census Bureau information mm -hmm. from 1920 to the most current census, which was taken in uh, 2010. Yes, sir. We have one coming up in 2020. You know, because the census is taken every 10 years. And uh, it was uh, really a startling uh, revelation mm. because, as you can look, I, I looked at three different races or ethnic groups, uh, whites, Hispanics, and black. Yes. And you can look at the difference between, let's say, the white, as well as the Hispanics and uh, the white uh, you know, at uh, the uh, angle mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the chart, it it goes up. Hispanic, it's going upwards, and the black is basically leveling off, leveling off yeah. almost flat line. And I saw, in looking more specifically at the numbers, um, around the year 2003 is when, the, you know, African Americans in the United States had been the largest minority. Mm -hmm. Around the year 2003, it was eclipsed by the Hispanic community. And I'm not disparaging any community, any no, people, not at all. any race or any group. Just looking at the numbers where... Uh, as around 2003, we, we could see that the population of Hispanics in the United States was about 50 million. And at that time, of, of, you know, when they surpassed the uh, black community, the black population, which was at around 38 million. And so uh, with this census that's coming up in 2010, I mean 2020, uh, 20, I'm sorry, uh, I'd like to see <clears throat> if that continues, particularly for the black community, the black population in America, if it's going to continue to kind of level off and flatline. But where I'm headed with this is that I'm convinced that the reason why the black population is basically flatlined, again, is not because of HIV, not right. because of gang violence, or, and, and, you know, the street violence as reflected in some of our major cities like Chicago That's and right. Baltimore. No, it's not the, the, <coughs> uh, It's not uh, uh, anything. It's not certainly not the, the Klan, you know, or racism. That's right. It's, it's not that. Uh, any of the other uh, pathologies are, and things that, that, that can uh, kill a group of people, no epidemics. I sincerely and honestly believe it, it's because of the interaction of Planned Parenthood within the black community. And I also believe that the Hispanic community, to a certain degree, uh, has also been adversely affected as far as the population. You know, and, and there are some white uh, abortions of course. also, like any other group. But the main thing is that... Planned Parenthood focus on the black community. <clears throat> Am I right about that? You're absolutely right about that, Pastor. I mean, if you look as a recent study that was done by a group called Protecting Black Life, they noticed that 78% of Planned Parenthood surgical abortion clinics are found in black and Latino neighborhoods. If you go back to the founder, Margaret Sanger, we remember her words that she wrote to Clarence Gamble, we don't want word to get out, she says, that we want to exterminate the Negro population. She went on to say that the minister is the one who could help straighten out their more rebellious members should it ever occur to them. The rea sad reality is, is that Planned Parenthood has been on the forefront. They're the largest abortion provider in the country. And in the black community, we abort over 300,000 black babies every year. 
there have been uh, approaching 19 million black children that have been aborted since uh, the, the start of Roe v. Wade. So we know that it's been a disproportionate impact on our community and we have to do everything that we can to let people know. And the adverse effect of all of that is, is that we have, as you stated, flatlined and ultimately we will fall below replacement level. If we don't have our children, if we continue to abort our children, we'll fall below that level. And so that's the startling, shocking reality that many people within our community do not know. So in essence, Margaret Sanger would be proud of her Planned Parenthood organization and its effectiveness within the black community. As was stated by one of our um, advisory board members, uh, professional football player Ben Watson, he says Planned Parenthood's plan is working in the black community. Quite effectively. Especially if you mention, you know, the, the black minister, mm. particularly. Again, you and I as preachers of the gospel. That's right. That's right. Uh, the black <clears throat> minister would be, as far as Planned Parenthood, as far as its uh, focus was getting the black minister involved. That's exactly right. And in fact, at uh, Human Coalition, we have a church engagement arm within our organization that specifically engages the church. You know, I'm reminded of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, you know, in his writing from a Birmingham jail that uh, regarding the church, he says that, you know, we're not to be the master nor the servant of the state, but the church is called to be the conscience of the state. And if the church loses its prophetic zeal, it becomes an irrelevant social club without moral or spiritual authority. We've got to engage the church. And I remember one African-American pastor saying this. He says, well, I can't really preach about abortion, you know, in church because I'll lose too many members. And my friend told him, he said, look, at the rate of over 300,000 babies a year, you're already losing members. That's a profound statement. Actually. Already losing members. Yes, already losing them. And, and, and we are based upon the, the factual information, That's the exactly Census right. Bureau, and, and, and what we see each and every day. Not only must I uh, say the uh, minister, he was just one who was identified mm -hmm. um, to, uh, because uh, if there were any rebels, so to speak, <laughs> um, he would be the one to what, uh, help quiet them That's quiet exactly them right. Down. That's exactly right. Because they knew that there would be people that would be outraged within our community that we would not stand for that. And so their strategy was to use ministers as well as other leaders like W.B.E.B. Du Bois and others to help to deal with uh, the more rebellious members within our community that wouldn't stand for it. And, and they, they were effective at engaging black leaders to uh, help us in our own demise. Yes, uh, even Margaret Sanger, during that time, come to think of it, you mentioned Du Bois. Uh, she even had a black advisory board. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and wh what about today? Again, like I said, uh, it's not just the black <clears throat> ministers. It's also the politicians. Oh, my goodness. When you look at the Congressional Black Caucus uh, in, in Washington, D.C., almost all of them get a strong rating from, uh, from Planned Parenthood. And they get funding from Planned Parenthood. Uh, I have had meetings with Congressional Black Caucus members talking about this, and they know what we're saying is true. And they're not proud of it, but yet they take that money and they push that narrative. And so we have to evaluate uh, within our community even how we cast our votes. We need to hold them accountable. If we say that we love our community, if we say that black people are precious, if we say that black lives matter, then we need to challenge them on don't black lives matter in the womb yeah and, and you can talk with let's say uh people that may be part of your congregation individually and they would recoil from the notion of abortion mm. on the most part you know they would not like it because they know it's uh, it's against god's will that's right and uh, many times, uh, 
But when we look in the ancient history, and even the most recent history, uh, babies and children have been slaughtered mm -hmm. by the wicked. That's right. But yet we see so many babies, as you had mentioned, uh, a, a 19 million since Roe v. Wade, <clears throat> black babies, mm -hmm. you know, that, and about 50 to 60 million total. That's right, over 50 million total. That's yes, right. and, and so that is telling us that there must be a conscience of the government to reassert itself, yes. which is the church. That's right. But That's if the right. church, you know, um, one of the things that I've learned that within the black community, if you say abortion, it automatically f goes to an issue of politics. Mm -hmm. This is something that we have to overcome, something that we have to let people be aware of. Well, I'm proud to say that Human Coalition has a, uh, a strategic partnership with the Church of God in Christ, which is one of the largest African-American denominations in the country. So there is good news. I mean, there's good news despite all of the bad news is, is that I believe that the church is coming alive and is, is, is awakening. And so uh, we've seen through that family life campaign that the Church of God in Christ has. It's the only black denomination that has a national pro-life, pro-family campaign. Uh, we've seen many of their pastors and bishops change their minds about this issue, and many of them have taken the matters into their own hands where they are educating their communities and their congregation, as well as even going door to door during election time, um, supporting pro-life candidates and saying, we need to know where candidates stand on these issues. And so I'm proud of our work with the Church of God in Christ and all that they're doing to help educate their community and to uh, see more babies saved. Yes, and how can we say black lives matter and point our fingers at our policemen, our law enforcement, and yet support Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger's agenda to eliminate black lives at the same time it does not make good sense. Think about it. Brother Dean Nelson, I'd like to thank you thank for you being for with us today on the Isaiah Project. Thank you as being a guest at God's Learning Channel. And we'd like to thank each of you for your continued and prayerful support of the Isaiah Project as well as other programs, especially God's Learning Channel. Your continued gifts will enable us to bring more good information for you. Thank you. I'm Dr. Melvin Johnson, your host. See you next time. God bless. Order your copy of this program from the GLC Bookstore by calling the numbers or visiting the website on your screen. Please include the program number when ordering. This is the sound of confidence soaring. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and honor. This is the sound of honor roaring. We should never, never forget those that gave their lives. This is the sound of a generation rising above. 337 for Bobo Box Papa. We want to be involved in the education of young people so that they can take our aircraft and the stories that our pilots tell and realize their own dreams. The commemorative Air Force honors the heroes of yesterday while educating and inspiring the heroes of tomorrow. Your future and how you live your life is dependent on how you think. You can learn more at commemorativeairforce.org right now.